Today we're putting Photoshop's brand new select subject to the test. Here's a little hint, it's actually pretty good. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna show you three different images that we're cutting out basically automatically using Photoshop's new select subject. Now, select subject as a feature is not completely new. Photoshop introduced this a couple of years ago and honestly, it was just kind of okay. But using their AI tool called Adobe Sensei, it works surprisingly well. So we've got three different images today uh, going from easy, medium, and then hard. And we're gonna show you basically how to cut subjects out with just a couple of clicks. So we're starting with this image on our left where our subject is basically just on a white background. Should be a pretty easy test of the tool. So let's hit F for full screen. By the way, you can actually download all of these sample images on flurn.com for free. That way you can follow along with this tutorial. Just click on the link right down below to get these images. So all we have to do for our select subject, we just go to our select menu and go down to subject. Uh, and literally that's all you have to do, which is insane. Uh, and you can see, in fact, yes, our subject is selected. Uh, I do recommend always refining your edge because you can see it's, although it's really good, uh, not quite perfect. So after clicking on select subject, go up to select and then down to select and mask. And I pretty much always recommend using select and mask. Uh, it just allows you to refine your selection. Now, my settings are all cranked up here. So let's just bring feathering way down and I'll bring contrast way down and we can get an idea of what this actually looks like straight from the tool. Uh, we have a few views up here at the top. Uh, I actually find this overlay view to be the most helpful. It basically turns everything that's not selected red. So let's go ahead and zoom into some areas that need a little bit of work. Now up here at the top, we have a few different tools. Uh, this first one is basically gonna allow us to paint in areas uh, that we want to be selected. And then it's gonna use Adobe's AI to kind of figure it out for us basically. So uh, let's go ahead and start by clicking that. You can also minus it out. So let's just paint over this glove a little bit here. Say like, yes, this glove is a part of this person. Well, it's not, but it's a part of the selection anyway. And you can see, I just paint over it and then it's like, okay, what do you want? Uh, and it looks pretty good. We'll just call that uh, good enough there. Uh, we have some areas here uh, where we have little, like these white patches. For that, I recommend using the Refine Edge tool, which is next on our list. And you can simply paint over those areas. Uh, this does a really great job, especially for like fringes and things like that, or anything where you have hair. Now you have one more tool that I'd recommend using, and this basically just allows you to paint more or less on your selection, okay? So in this case with the rope, for instance, uh, let's go ahead and click here. Uh, it's a little confused, so I'm just like literally just like manually painting in where I want to be selected. So this is this is a manual process here, uh, but it should help you out whenever the tool is kind of just like not doing exactly what you want it to do. You can always come in here and paint this in. Uh, by the way, you can change your uh, options here. For instance, your hardness, I would recommend bringing that down a little bit. There we go. You can, of course, hold Alt or Option to minus it out. Uh, which is going to allow you to create a little bit better selection. Now, again, this tool is, I mean, select subject along with select and mask is pretty automatic. Like you don't, you won't really have that much refinement that you need to do. Uh, but in, especially for anything like high end, uh, you will want to go in here and clean these selections. If you're just doing a quick mock-up, then you can pretty much just use select subject as is but anything you would actually be, you know, publishing for commercial work, for instance, you would want to make sure to go ahead and refine it. You can see here, it didn't do a perfect job, but this is no knock to the tool at all, because honestly, for a, you know, a computer powered tool, it's, it's honestly very, very good. And I've got to imagine that within the next couple of years, even these little bugs will be worked out and the tool will just kind of work exactly like how you want. Here in the output settings, let's go ahead and click there. I'm just going to click on decontaminate colors. This can actually help when you have like fringing and things like that. Uh, and we're going to output this just to a uh, new layer with a layer mask. Okay, let's hit okay there. So it just could make a new layer, pop a layer mask on there. And then I'm going to just grab a solid color fill layer. And let's just go ahead and make this all the way white and see how that looks. 
uh, pretty dang good. We'll just go down a little bit darker and you can see putting my subject on a variety of colored backgrounds here uh, works pretty well. We can grab a, a color from his pants if we wanted to and maybe lighten that up there a little bit. Okay, so really you can see the cutout process is pretty simple. Now, I would expect a tool to work pretty well in this situation. The guy was pretty much on a white background anyway, and honestly the magic wand tool probably could have worked pretty close. Uh, so let's see how it does on a little bit harder images. So here's our next image in the test. We don't have a lot of like, you know, fly out hairs and things like that, but part of my subject is in focus. You can see his face there and part of my subject is out of focus. So uh, we also got a lot of stuff going on here. So how's the tool going to do? Let's go to select and then down to subject again and it did a pretty good job. As always, you were gonna to wanna to go to select and then down to select and mask uh, after the fact. Let's just zoom in here again. Now with hair, I would always recommend going in with this refine edge brush, okay? Let's just kind of paint in here, the refine edge, right along here. Honestly, this tool does such a good job. Cutting out hair is a very different process now than it was uh, even just a few years ago. Uh, if you want to do very high end, you know, cutouts, obviously there's, you know, uh, great techniques that are a bit more manual and we have those available on flurn.com as a part of our subscription. Uh, but if you're just doing relatively quick stuff and you're, you're okay with these automatic tools, then I gotta say they do a great job. Uh, let's go to our, you know, add to selection tool here and just kind of paint this in, boop, boop, boop. There we go. I think they're really doing a good job at like for most use cases, these tools are gonna work really well. If you are gonna be doing, you know, high end commercial work and things like that, where, you know, for instance, look at this edge. Let's just go here to uh, like black on white. So this edge, uh, you know, is, is okay. Uh, if you were doing, you know, like a little bit higher end work, you would want this to be a clean edge. You would want it to be very nice and precise and you would wanna get rid of all this stuff. Basically, you would use a combination of like the pen tool and channels to do that. Uh, and we have tutorials on Flurn uh, on how to do that. But again, for the most part, if you don't mind a little bit of jaggedy selections every, you know, every now and then, um, heck, just go with this tool. All right, let's go here, uh, decontaminate colors. I do suggest using that. I do suggest going to output new layer with a layer mask and hit okay. So there we go, a new layer and a layer mask and we'll just give it all the old solid color fill test. There we go, hit okay and pop that underneath it. And we can see even here with the hair, uh, it's done a pretty good job. So now with the third image in our series, the one that we're all kind of expecting, uh, a little bit of rough time ahead. Uh, we have all these little flyaway hairs and all these little details and things like that. And we all know that sort of thing is, it's pretty tough to cut that out, especially for an automatic tool. So here we go with select and down to select subject. And as you can see, it did pretty well. We actually have these individuals hairs, hairs, hairs selected. Uh, it didn't do much here. So again, we wanna go ahead and refine it and it looks like uh, it didn't include this part of our subject's jacket, but that's okay because we'll just go to select and then down to select and mask. There we go. Uh, for my view, again, I'm gonna go back to this overlay so I can see what I'm doing. We're gonna use this uh, automatic tool where I just paint a little bit over here and then it's gonna be like, oh, okay, you wanted that? Oh, th that's interesting. Uh, Photoshop just crashed. Photoshop pretty much never crashes. Uh, so that's interesting. It looks like there's still a little bit going on within the tool itself that they're still working on. Not a big deal. We'll just open Photoshop back up and uh, do this again. Photoshop quit unexpectedly. I know, I saw that. I, I don't know. I, honestly, I wouldn't let Photoshop crash, crashing on me once in this tutorial keep you from using this tool. I, I've used this tool a few times and it, it has not crashed on me before this. So let's go back here. I'm gonna just uh, try to do the same thing that I did before and hopefully it <laughs> will not crash now. All right, let's just go ahead and paint this on there and boom, it did pretty well. Uh, then for this area of the hair, you're gonna wanna go to your refine edge tool. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and paint this in right over the top of the hair and it does a great job saying, oh, okay, you want some hair to be visible? Uh, no problem, whatever you want. There we go, so let's go ahead and paint that in. Uh, again, you can see, mm, not perfect. 
not a perfect selection here. We'll just go ahead and we'll add this area here, there. All right, that's looking a little bit better. I think we're pretty near acceptable at this point. There we go. Now, uh, with the hair, this is the type of area where we really would see a lot of fringing. If I just put this, uh, for instance, on white, okay? Uh, there we go, we'll bring the opacity of this up. Uh, you can see, especially when I put this on white, just because this was a light colored hair on a dark background, uh, we do get this fringing, which just looks weird, right? It, it doesn't work. It would work on a dark colored background just fine, but here it's not gonna work. So that's really where this option for decontaminate colors, that's really where this comes in, okay? So you'll really, you'll really want that to be visible. So decontaminate colors, that's kind of an important one. It just kind of um, takes the average value and spreads it out and kind of gets rid of some of the some of the dark areas and things like that. But it can kind of honestly uh, mess your selection up a little bit. But uh, there are, again, advanced ways of getting around that, which we uh, have tutorials on Flurn, but for a relatively automatic tool, it works pretty well. New layer with layer mask, let's hit okay there. Let's go ahead and stick this on a solid color fill layer to see behind it. Uh, that looks good. Let's go ahead and I'm just gonna put this right under. Here we can see on a light colored background uh, versus a dark colored background. Now it's looking a little bit better on a darker color background because my subject was on a dark colored background to begin with. Uh, this area needs a little bit of cleanup. It's, uh, you know, I would say okay, but I would definitely want it to be a little bit cleaner than that. You know, but for a medium dark background and for some very automatic tools, it's really impressive. It, it's impressive that a, a, you know, a piece of software can just kind of figure all of this stuff out. So here you can see the before and afters. I think Photoshop's done a great job with this tool. They've specifically targeted people. So hair is included in these selections. Just make sure you're clicking on select and mask. Personally, I can't wait to see what Photoshop is going to be doing with their AI tools in the next few years. It's just gonna make uh, kind of the minutia of Photoshop a little bit easier. And that gives us more time as creatives to make fun projects, which is exactly what we want to do. Let me know what you guys think about AI and how it's changing the way you work with technology and computers and the way you create. Uh, I think it's really cool. I think it's also a little bit scary, but that's a whole nother conversation. So let's get that going in the comments. Thank you so much. If you wanna get a free tutorial from us every single week, just click on that subscribe button. And if you wanna learn more on how to professionally retouch or composite images together, do things like frequency separation, check out Flurn. Pro. Click on your screen right now to learn more. Thanks so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.